teams in the nation Duke and UCLA meet in a non-conference game with major tournament implications Payne Weber welcomes you to ABC's college basketball the Duke Blue Devils hoping to extend a seven game winning streak travel west to play UCLA the Bruins now leading the Pac-10 Duke's tra Trajan Langdon nicknamed the Alaskan assassin he's hitting 50 percent of his three point shots UCLA coach Steve Lavin he replaced Jim Herrick before the start of the season he's no longer an interim coach having signed a four year contract. Duke's starting lineup shows that Ricky Price of Carson, California, steps into that starting lineup for this game. Welcome, everybody. I'm Brett Musburger with Dick Vitale. And, uh, Dick, we talked about major tournament implications. Tell everybody what this means to both schools now. Well, you take a look. Number one with Duke. If Duke can right now, I think, win this game, they move ahead of Wake Forest as a number one seed. For UCLA, there was a time when people were not even thinking of them as a number four seed. If they can run the table, they have a chance to be a number two seed. They're a hot baby, but so is Mike K. This should be one of the great ones, Brent. Duke and UCLA. This is like an NCAA prelim. UCLA in the home whites. Bob Garibaldi is the lead official. He'll toss it up. He's working with Richie Ballesteros and Bill Kennedy. This is a quality, and let's emphasize quality officiating team here today with McCoy jumping center against McLeod. UCLA has come up empty thus far this year against national teams out of the conference. They were 0-3. They've lost to Illinois. They lost to Kansas. And they lost to Louisville. They are motivated. They talked about that yesterday in the locker room. I was in their locker room, Brent. And they want to make a statement today nationally that they are back. Small, active Duke lineup. It has become very potent, especially from three-point land. Cable on the floor. Trigger and missed the first field goal attempt of the game. And the Bruins put it down, go open. Henderson underneath. Fakes has it knocked away by this tough, aggressive Duke D. Can the Bruins handle it? Wojo with the ball brings it down for Duke, and Dollar defends him. Wojo may be their MVP, a 3 1 assist turnover ratio. Ricky Price with the wing jumper. Here he is, back home. The first field goal of the game, and against the Duke pressure, the Bruins bring it up now, trailing by three. Cameron Dollar running the floor for UCLA and Coach Lavin. He's going to get pressured a great deal by Will Jahowski, who's an old Rambo man, really plays the basketball tough. Nice pass. Henderson. <laughs> nice look by Jelani McCoy. Henderson, who's so versatile. He's one of the most versatile players in college basketball. Got something in his up around his eye. Capel is shaken up. Let's watch this now, and here's a wonderful pass by McCoy, hitting Henderson right down the key area, but we've got an injured player over here. Capel has checked out of the lineup because of he's being tended to over the sidelines. The Blue Devils bring it back down now, and the little bulldog, Wojo, sets the floor for the Devils. And a man defense by UCLA changed their style earlier this year. They were playing a lot of zone defense. Langdon maneuvers, penetrates, dishes back. Wojo still corner. Shot. And hitting that shot is Rashawn McLeod. Wow. McLeod's really had a lot of versatility inside, outside. Transfer from out of St. John's University. Really playing well for Duke. And McCoy is fouled, so he will move up to the free throw line. Jelani McCoy, Dick. Tell everybody about his progress as the big man for the Bruins. Well, he's got to absolutely dominate on the inside, blocking shots. That's his great strength. But he's also very effective around the basket. One of the leaders in America, field goal percentage, dunks a great deal on the inside, has a great upside to him. In fact, I was telling you earlier, there aren't many teams in college basketball that have four potential hey, NBA first-rounders in their starting lineup, and that's what UCLA has. Now, besides McCoy for Lavin, who would the other three be? Well, you got to talk Bailey or 
Bannon and certainly J.R. Henderson. They're all definitely potential NBA first rounders. Gets the ball. They really, they really have regrouped. They're focused. They're playing as a team as opposed to earlier this year where they were very individually oriented. There's that pressure on a 2-2-1 press. Bailey is chasing Langdon Dick and doing a pretty good job of it defensively for the Bruins. And of course, Duke will try to get Langdon going here early if they can. Carwell is fouled. He replaced the injured Capel and a chance for the three the old fashioned way. Carwell with that baseline drive. Good up and under move. Excellent player. Chris Carwell shooting one. Free throw that would make it 8-3. Carwell from out of St. Louis played at the same high school with Lauren Woods, the big guy. Can you imagine that high school team, Brett, the two of them together? State champs back to back. There's your big man that you talked about. An easy cleanup now for number 34, McCoy. Oh, nice strip. Looked like he had a great strip. Richie Ballesteros with the call, said he grabbed him. Cameron Dollar has been really playing well defensively. Did an excellent job against a good Arizona team and Mike Bibby. There's the dump down inside penetration and McCoy with the finish with the slam jam band. Very athletic team UCLA. Duke very versatile. They have a lot of players. Here's Langdon fires trigger got away from Toby and he missed on the shot and now Dollar will put it down. I'll tell you they're really running the basketball. High lob but in too deep. Try to get a little showtime right there. Remember Cameron Dollar, 95, when he played brilliantly in a final game to lead him to the national title when he replaced Tyus Edney? Well, he hasn't been able to duplicate that in terms of the last two years, but last year he was injured most of the year. He's a key player for UCLA. Does a great job defensively. His dad, an outstanding high school coach in Atlanta, Georgia. Turned over by Price. What a different club. They got beat by 48 by Stanford and came back and beat Stanford by 19. That's a 67-point turnaround. Even I could figure that out. I didn't go to Northwestern, Mr. Musburger. I didn't have 1,400 SATs like you did. He's open. Davis is going to work and couldn't get it away, but he was muscling his way in that time. Rojo comes up, and there's going to be a foul. Wojo reaching in on O'Banna, and the Bruins will take it out on the side. I think Mike Krzyzewski so proud of the effort of his kids, especially with the play of Wojciechowski. Leads the ACC in steals. Mike Krzyzewski is back. That fire in his eyes. You and I talked to him before the game. Said how much he loves this basketball team. Look at his defense. Really loves playing defense, Wojciechowski. And over the screen. and they double it down there. They won't give it to us now. He's got it on the turn. And he's really good. He's back in. They foul Price. Well, Bannon's really been playing well. Had a great game against Arizona. In fact, the two games against Arizona has scored 50 points. He's really running well. A lot of people say MVP of the Pac-10, but I think it's got to go to Ed Gray, who suffered an unbelievable injury last night. Scored 48 points for Cal, and he'll be an NBA first rounder. Ed Gray, to me, has to be player of the year in the conference. Cable has returned for the Blue Devils. Bailey defended him, and the whistle is away from the ball. Kennedy with the whistle on, looking in. Brent, I think that Duke really stepped it up when they started to get great play out of Jeff Capel and Ricky Price. They were experienced players. Both guys between them averaged 30 a game last year, and they struggled out of the game. Carwell has it knocked away, but right into Price's hands. A lot of intensity out there, a lot of emotion, intensity, a lot of pride, both these schools. McLeod with a good fake, got inside his man, missed the shot. Carwell with an offensive rebound. Wojo squared through. McLeod fouled by O'Bannon. That's the one area UCLA's got to have the advantage is inside with their size, especially with Henderson and with McCoy. Duke, not a big basketball team, Brett. That's the one concern. That's two fouls on O'Bannon. 
Chris Johnson checks in for the Bruins and O'Bannon is out of the game. Langdon replaces Wojo for Dukes, so number 21 back on the floor, the Alaskan assassin. You like that Alaskan assassin. I like the way you use that. You like reading that today. That was a woman sportscaster, I'm told, back in the Raleigh Durham area who uh, tagged him with that. I think it's a wonderful. <laughs> Great shooter. When you talk about Langdon, he's probably the best pure shooter ever at Duke since, well, I would say since Bobby Verga. Remember that name yeah. years ago from out of New Jersey? Verga was a great shooter, but Langdon to me didn't have great scoring. Lee Ferry was a great college shooter. Yeah, too, not bad either. That. Good passer, too. 9 5, Duke early lead. Great second pass inside the Johnson. That's great execution. Good offensive efficiency. Very unselfish there, Bailey. Something again that didn't exist earlier this year. They're playing much more as an unselfish team. When you play together as a team, a lot of good things happen. McCoy rebounds. McCoy is definitely a rebounding presence against this undersized Duke lineup right now. He's a real outstanding shot blocker as well. Offensive foul against Bailey. Well, Duke does a great job rotating over on Bailey. Bailey had a big game against Southern Cal. His dad is here. His dad and Ricky Price's dad, great story on him yesterday. Both from California, played against each other in high school. We got a timeout in the poly. Duke leads it by two. Payne Weber College Basketball on ABC. Brought to you by Payne Weber. When you invest with Payne Weber, you invest with more intelligence. Columbia. Healthcare has never worked like this before. Toyota and their full line of quality cars and trucks. And Discus Athletic Activewear. Discus Athletic, the one thing to wear for every sport. When you come on the road, you want good officials. Bob Garibaldi will hand the ball off. UCLA is out of fouls already less than five minutes into the game. Duke will now shoot free throws the rest of the way here in the first half. There are only two team fouls against the Blue Devils. Boy, do you like to see fair officiating when you hit the road. Garibaldi, Ballesteros, and Kennedy have given that to the Blue Devils so far. And Charles O'Bannon on the sideline. We saw the Beanie Boys, the big cheering section for UCLA. Equivalent to the Cameron Crazies is their claim. To me, the Cameron Crazies, that's the most unique place in America. Capel missed on that shot, and it'll go over to the Bruins out of bounds, wearing the black uniforms. Yeah, what do you think of their new look? Interesting look. It's 9 7. <laughs> Bailey up on top. Langdon defending him. Langdon Good battle there. Dick. Langdon's an excellent defensive player as well. Played that Harper really tough earlier this year. Great weak side defense. Jumping over was McLeod to make the steal. Price has it knocked away. Bruins come back with a strong defensive play. And Dollar is fouled. It's one on Duke as they were coming out. We're going to watch the help side now defensively by Duke. There's the rotation, the good help side. Excellent play by McLeod, who played for Bob Hurley in high school. Now we're going to see UCLA defensively. They step, stop the penetration. The one thing they have done really well, UCLA, and they practiced this yesterday, is to try to shut down the perimeter game. So perimeter defense becomes big for UCLA because Duke's averaging eight threes made per game. So Lavin would settle for a lower scoring game, which it has been so far, 9-7. And Bruins can either take the lead with a three or tie it now with a two. There's your team foul situation. Bailey pulls the trigger, missed the three. Wojo into his hands. Bailey, a very streaky shooter, could really knock down three in a row. Capo loses dribble out of bounds, but it was hit by Johnson. Duke's ball, 27 on the shot clock. When you say Johnson, that's Marcus Johnson's son. He was a great player here when he played here at UCLA. Now working in television. Chris has got problems with his foot. He told me he's got bone spurs. going to need surgery at the end of the year. Wojo and Dollar collide. I'll tell you, Dollar is he's an tough. active defensive point guard. That's a good point. He's an excellent defensive point guard. Really harasses the other club, gets him out of their offense. He's barely handling the rock. Henderson with a screen on a pick and roll. An NBA play. Score it. That was They're waving off. 
Wave it all. Offensive foul is called. Like I said, that's an NBA play. What a wave it off. Tremendous two-man play. A little screen and roll. Excellent pass by Bailey. I thought they missed that one there. That's the great look inside to Henderson. There's the layup. Oh, I think no call there, baby. Well, UCLA Duke, got really, really hurt there. One thing, though, you pointed it out early, Dick, is how well Duke sets up and is willing to take the charge, and that's two fouls against Henderson. And Myers, Bob Myers, 6-6, checks into the game. And so UCLA is in foul trouble. That's the storyline we pointed out earlier. And it's 9-7, Devils with a two-point lead. Inside Wallace, open underneath, and they're going to miss now. O'Bannon and Henderson. Nice backdoor cut. Good movement without the ball. Both guys on the sideline with two. Steve Lavin afraid doesn't want him to get that third. They got to get McCoy and Bob a little bit offensively. Well, Wallace fronting him. Dick, did you see that? Yeah. Took it away. So Johnson glides on the drive, and the foul is against Duke. They got to run some screens for McCoy on the interior. He's so effective around the basket. Didn't miss a shot in two games against Arizona. And there's a look at a man that went seven times for the final four in nine years. Back to back national titles. Coach Kelly. That foul dick was on Wallace, his first. One of the things that uh, all the folks out here who follow the Bruins have pointed out to me is that it is a bench without depth. So having two starters in foul trouble hurts now, and Johnson is probably their best uh, sub. He hits the first free throw. Yeah, he's one of the premier six men in basketball. Had a great year last year. Struggled a little bit this year in terms of what's expected from him, but he's a good offensive player. Lost a lot of weight. His mom designed a program for him. He adhered to the program, got himself in great shape. Had a good year, but he's playing hurt. A lot of heart and guts the kid has. Mom should write a book. She yeah. A fortune. Everybody else does. Capel. Very active defensively, UCLA. Really working on a defensive end. Something they didn't do when they got blitzed here by Kansas. Lost their first game to Tulsa in the NIT. Looking for that inside outside game, and Langdon missed the shot, and the foul is against Carowell. Up over the top on the rebound. That's his second. I tell you, this place is alive here at Pauley Pavilion. They got all over my case, Brent, because I didn't pick up the win in 95. And I know you did. I have to say this. My partner during the Duke UCLA game looked at them and he said, Dick, put it down. UCLA will win the national title. Will they win it this year? We'll put you on the spot again. I don't think so, Dick. If you want to put me on the spot today, I say Kansas wins the championship. Yeah, Kansas looks good. They got Pollard back. You know I'm a huge fan of LaFrance and the way he built his body up. I love the Jayhawks this year. I picked LaFrance on my first team All American team. Did you really? Yeah, I did. First team All American. Along with Duncan and Van Horn and Brevin Knight and also Chauncey Billups. So Newton has checked into the lineup for the first half. And Newton's little size. Bailey on the penetration. That's a nice touch, Dick. Yeah, Toby Bailey down the lane. He's a big-time scorer and potential player. Remember that game against Arkansas, the NCAA title, had 26 points and nine rebounds. So the game is tied, and Langdon still a little cold here at the poly. Johnson with another rebound, and the Bruins can take the lead. It's interesting with Newton on the floor. Mike may feel he has to go bigger. Dollar on the penetration and blocking foul against Duke. Newton's an interesting story. Obviously, he's the one big player Duke has. Let him in rebounding and scoring earlier this year. And then he got himself in a situation where Coach K didn't feel that he lived up to Duke's standards with his effort in practice, put him on a sideline, and went to the smaller lineup. They've been 6-0 and since they have gone to that smaller lineup. It started when you and I did the game with Georgia Tech. Here's for the lead now, Cameron Dollar. He was great when he stepped in a pressure cooker. Highest Eddie Quinn playing that final game. Jimmy Herrick and his team march on and win the national title. I hope Herrick gets a job because I think it will eliminate some of that little animosity that goes on now between Herrick and what exists here. He needs a job somewhere and deserves a second chance. Oh, well, this is his team. He recruited it. Steve Lavin, his top assistant, That's now nice. runs it. And uh, Jim Herrick. Deserves credit for the way he recruited here. You can't take that away from him. And I hope he gets another one too, Dick. I think he's a fine coach. Well, he deserves that second chance. Made a mistake, obviously. As you watch that great defensive effort right now by UCLA. Making Duke really work hard to execute their offensive game. So Wojo collided with Brandon and Lloyd. And it's a one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. They're shooting already.
Look at Lavin right there. He's going to try and coach. He's going to be active on a sideline. Look at him right now. There's the defensive stance. Look at him. He's saying, get down low. Play good D. Get down low. Lavin and his staff all played at the same high school. Jimmy Saya and also Spencer, they played together in high school in the Bay Area. Great high school. Langdon knocks the ball out of bounds, but a strong run by the Bruins. Mike Krzyzewski and Duke with their hands full in the poly. Welcome to our New York studios. I'm John Saunders updating a game in the Big Ten important matchup as Purdue is chasing Minnesota for a share of the league. Carroll passes in to Brad Miller who jams this one down and the Boilermakers have a five point lead. They could tie but Minnesota swept them so they'll get the automatic bid. All right, John, thank you. And here at Trajan Langdon is 0 for 3 from three point land. Dickey came in here hitting 49%. They need his outside game. Well, they need the perimeter game. Duke lives off the three point shot from the perimeter, and they've done a great job, UCLA, shutting that down. And that was one of their priorities yesterday in their game preparation. Loose ball. Johnson goes hard to the floor. Look at Wojo. The Bulldog comes up with it. Love those kind of players. They scrap, they claw, they're the John Madden kind of players. Make the old Madden team, Will Johowski. Look at Newton trying to get post position inside. They're going to need the big fella today. They're going to need Newton to help him against the size of UCLA. Oh, great spinning move by Price. I'll tell you, he's played brilliantly the last six games, Grant. He's averaged 13 a game, instant offense off the bench, and he was really struggling earlier this year. He's like a starter coming off the bench. Five points. He did start today. Yeah, they started his hometown at nearby Carson, California. Johnson inside the line missed, and there's Price rebounding. And uh, he's extremely athletic and active. Those of you who follow the Blue Devils well aware of that. He's motivated. His family's here. He's got a bunch of friends here. That pass by Langdon. Dollar comes back three on McCoy. one. He's break. Give it back. Give it back to McCoy. Wizard of West would like to do John Wood and I saw a smile on his face because that was unselfish team play by Dollar. Three steals for Cameron Dollar now. And goes the other way. John Wood had told me before, it over. The, before the game, Brandy. So what I like about the team now, Steve Lavin has them playing as a team. They're playing unselfish basketball as we look at the greatest coach ever to live, John Wooden. Now watch the unselfish play. He gives it back once, gives it back to him a second time, and there is the finish by McGraw. And the bench loves it. Look at him and say, we like that. We like that style of play. That's why they hang batters here in Westwood. Bruins up to 15-13 here in the first half. McCoy, got to get McCoy involved. Johnson banging Carowell, comes up with the J. He's an excellent post player for a player with his size at 6'4". He can invert, go to the box, and score. Six points off the bench for Johnson, and that's huge with two starters picking up two fouls apiece in the early going. So the bench is holding in. Langdon misses again. That's his fourth from out there that he's missed on. And Dollar is fouled by Wojo. There's a certain strut and a certain bounce to these UCLA kids that I did not see earlier when I watched them on a two, Brent. They are playing with confidence, and that's a tribute you have to give it to Steve Lavin because he instituted some strong discipline. He benched guys. He really got over through guys out of practice that didn't want to listen and respond and he's in command now and you talk about timing he was a part-time assistant two years ago he was making what you make in one day when he was working on that sideline and today he's getting like 400 thou a year wow that's changing your life well it he had to establish discipline to get their respect and their attention as dollar hits it that's what had to go down first the players liked Jim Eric there was no question about that here's the youngster 32 years old takes over and he's got to establish his own way and he did it with authority here's a little information a lot of people aren't really aware of Steve Lavin almost became a member of Mike Krzyzewski's Mike Krzyzewski's staff two years ago he was down there interview and it was a great chance they were going to hire him and Mike practically advised him that he really belong here at UCLA all right the Devils are down six 1913 they get back quickly though with the three-point shot loose Langdon and the jump ball goes over the jump ball arrow 
points in UCLA's direction. When you have the three-point shot, you can get back quickly. Look at him right here as he's showing the step that they want to take to winning the national title. There's the road for UCLA. He said, we want to get into that building at the RCA Dome, where last year we were embarrassed in the first round by Princeton. They have a picture of the RCA Dome in the locker room. And last year, they lost in the first round to Princeton at that RCA Dome in Indianapolis. And they weren't happy with their seating. Now, the Bruins are on a 12-2 run. There's no question that the Bruins are one of the more talented teams in the nation. If they put it all together, they're going to be very dangerous. You just look at their athletic ability, right? Bailey gliding in, seal up off Carowell, and it goes over, out of bounds. Good call by Bob Garibaldi. I've always liked him as an official. Former Fair. pitcher. Yeah, pitched with the Giants. Bonus ball. Hey, we'll be at that Temple U Mass game, Atlantic 10. A lot at stake there. Cincinnati, Memphis, Oregon, UCLA. That's our lineup next Saturday here on ABC. Big game for Jerry Green. A couple of clubs hanging on for a bid here in the back 10. Have to win at the end. Need to get Langdon on track. Well, really? I'll tell you, Bailey is doing a wonderful job defending him right now. He's chasing him, battling off screens. Helps out on Price. Duke still missing from three-point land. It's been a huge difference in this game because Duke has made a living off that shot in the ACC recently. Well, you make eight of those a game. That's a big plus. Oh, he's going to gonna spin baseline. I'll tell you one thing. He's the real McCoy, Brent. There ain't no doubt about it. He's agile, he's mobile, and he's not fragile. That is seven points for McCoy. Duke is only one of eight from three-point land. The poly Pavilion faithful are up. Langdon on a driver misses. Offensive rebound back to Price. Misses. Loose. And McCoy, four rebounds. Two on two. Dollar spins. And Langdon hit him. Fouled him. They are really running the ball up the court. Pushing it up. The Beanie Boys are on cloud nine as they love their broods here. There's McCoy working the baseline against Carowell. Nice little fake. Hey, he's making like a mini version of Tim Duncan down here. You see Duncan's numbers yesterday, 20 points and 23 rebounds against Virginia. You still think they're the class of the ACC, right, Dick? The uh, Wake Forest? Oh, I really believe that Wake Forest, when you get to the postseason, I think with conservative play, teams get a little bit more conservative. The presence of Tim Duncan, I still give them an edge when it gets into that ACC tournament, even though you got to like the way North Carolina's coming on and the way certainly Duke has come on with 11 out of 12. Yeah, let's not overlook North Carolina because they've got oh, some hot. You bet. They are hot. That's a 10-point lead on a 16-2 Bruin run here in the first half, inside of eight minutes. And Duke stays ice cold out beyond the arc, and Bailey feels it. That's what happens, Brent. If you don't make threes, you live by them, you can get yourself in trouble. Partially blocked. They didn't see the open man who broke out. Here he is all alone, Carowell. Big possession. Did he step out of bounds down here, Brett? He might have. I'll tell you. Carabolo with that baseline drive. I don't think he did. Up spot. Carabolo was right there. And I'm going to say Bob Carabolo's got better eyes than I do. I only have one eye, so I'm going to give him the edge. Back to McCoy. Works on Carabolo. And now Johnson. Good spinning move. Attacks the glass. And he's fouled. No basket would have been in the NBA with a continuation. Came out of Crenshaw High School. Let's see, watch right now, Dick, and let's see if they just did happen to miss one. Oh, yes, foot's on the line. What do you think? What do you think? Come on, Mr. Musburger, what do you think? Looking for contact up high and missed the foot, I guess. <laughs> huh? Now, Wojo returns for Duke. The score is 23-15, seven minutes to go first half. This has been a very important and impressive burst by UCLA. Remember, this is a team that does not want to travel during the NCAAs this year. They had to go back east, got picked off by Princeton. That was the lowest scoring output of Jim Herrick's coaching career at UCLA. Held the Bruins down into the 40s, Johnson. Now, if they can wind up with a third seed and stay out west, they would appreciate that. They'd like to climb to a second, but we'll have to wait to see about that. That might be too high for them. They gave Arizona the edge. 
They gave Arizona the edge last year. Lojo hits it stepping inside. Stepped inside the three that time. Last year they won the Pac-10 by three games, and I thought they should have been out west. But they shipped them out. They looked at the long term, though. They look at your schedule and what you do for your long term. And last year they were 0-4 against national caliber teams out of the conference. Traveling. Duke, Duke basketball and uh, over on the side Tommy Amaker of course who is Mike Krzyzewski's key assistant over the sideline. Great assistant. Tries to try to calm him down trying to get his head back in this game. It's been a tough first half for Langdon. Time out. Well Charles O'Bannon went out with 16 13 remaining and the Bruins were trailing 9 4 shortly after that J.R. Henderson also went to the sideline so that impressive 16 2 run by the Bruins was made with two of their five starters over on the bench. We have 630 to play now and the Bruins leading it 23 17 Duke basketball. And they have turned it over. No dollar can't get the handle back to Duke. Steve Lavin's got to be happy with the thought that he could have Henderson, as you just said, and O'Bannon sitting on a sideline and be plus six here in the first half. Look at it here. I wonder if we'll keep it all coaching. He may lose it all. Look at that. Look at Steve. Look at how beautiful hair. He looks like a Hollywood guy. He looks like Pat Riley. A little Riley look there. Pat Riley with great concern down in Miami, having lost Alonzo Mourning for perhaps up to six weeks. And it'll hurt the Miami Heat for sure. Well, the Knicks were in our hotel last night. Talked to Patrick Ewing. He said he spoke to Alonzo. Expects to be back in about four to five weeks. Cable. Nice try. Kick out. Price. And there's the first try. Effective. A long time for the Blue Devils. Eight points for Price. That's the penetration and pitch. They like to penetrate and pitch it out. You give help, you're in trouble against them because they'll get that open three, and eventually they're going to knock those down. And it's suddenly a three-point basketball game. Dollar on the pull-up. McLeod got a hand on it. Here's Carrollwell, and now the Devils can inch to within one. Capel goes down, tries to save it, does. Price again. Oh, Price. No match for number 20, Brandon Lloyd. He can't stay with him. That's 10 points for Price. They've got to put someone else on Price. Ricky Price, unbelievable. He loves playing back at home here. And now the Blue Devils are on a 9-0 run, so they've jumped right back. Bailey penetrates, snaps back outside. Lloyd to run it down. Does, and he's fouled by Chappelle. Chappelle fouls him. Chappelle, another diaper dandy, Brett. Hey, Brett, look at his buddy here. He wants to say hello to us, Brett. What is this? Say hello here to Mr. Musburger. Here. Hey, say hello, Pet Mr. Musburger. Oh, he knocked his headset off. <laughs> I'll tell you. We can't even work in peace anymore, Brett. Oh, nothing like fun in a college game. So you don't get that in the NBA. We have fun, Dick. Uh, maybe I don't get mauled by you and mascots, but we managed to have a good time. Oh, look at that one spin in. Do the global trip a couple of times and back out. Chris Johnson for Cameron Dollar. There's a look at the free throw. Watch this one. Oh, and look at that spin around the world, around the world. Look at that thing go. That lid was on for Lloyd, wasn't it? And now the Devils come back down, trailing only by a point. Lloyd made some big threes against Oregon State, which they needed badly in the game earlier this year. He's a good long-range shooter. Came in with a good reputation out of Oklahoma. Now, Bailey is hounding Price, who's had the hot hand. McLeod penetrates. Beautiful penetration by McLeod. They do a great job getting one-on-one -on -one situations and utilizing their ability. You just knew the Duke kids would be back and the Sunday would not be a blowout. They play too hard and they're too talented and too well coached. Johnson doesn't get the roll. Price yanks it away. The Devils lead it by one inside of five minutes. Very impressive comeback. Calm, well coached, poised. And Ricky Price has really stepped up big time here. Playing at home. Thought about going again. O'Bannon's on him. He'll penetrate. Here he comes on a roll. Oh, what a show he's putting out at home. His dad is sitting up in the stands and he's saying, Mr. Bailey, my son's getting the best. 13 zip one. They had a great article yesterday comparing both fathers, teasing each other, how they call each other about 40, 50 times a day about saying one son's better than the other. Back down to Bailey. Who hits oh, great reverse. 
He is fouled. Chance for a three-point play. I'll tell you, great reverse layup right there by Charles O'Bannon. Part of the O'Bannon family, his brother Ed, MVP two years ago. We're going to watch the strip. There's the strip. Good defensive play by Bailey. Nice kick off. And there's Charles with that nice reverse layup. Hey, you were talking to him today about his brother Ed going to Dallas. Yeah, it, you know, it's a fresh life. He wasn't doing very well with the Nets. Needs some minutes. He's been a disappointment as far as his NBA career is concerned. And we'll see how it works out for him down in Dallas. It didn't take uh, Nelson Long to change the makeup of that team. Well, he made an atti attitude adjustment down here and just cleaned the house. It'll be interesting to see how Sean Bradley turns out. So we've got a timeout in the Poly Pavilion. 3.49 to go. Deadlocked at 26. Payne Weber College Basketball on ABC. Brought to you by Toyota and their full line of quality cars and trucks. U.S. Navy. Navy, let the journey begin. Canon Laser Color. Its only competition is reality. And MCI. Is this a great time or what? Well, that's a reminder that tonight, America's Funniest Home Videos, the world's deadliest volcanoes, and volcano fire on the mountain. That's your prime time lineup tonight on ABC. Ricky Price, Dick, has been a prime time player, and look who has joined wow, us. Wow, what a surprise. She's working here now, working with the gymnastics team. Just stopped by to say hello to us. Nice to have Kerry here at this game. Deadlocked at 26. A good one unfolding with 344 left in the first half. She's a student here at UCLA. So it's her first game, and she's really excited about it. Oh, there's that drive. They love it. Penetrates and hits the runner. See what you got to do there, Brand. You got to close that driving angle and give some help in the lane. They're starting to get into the gaps and seams. Something they do really well. Attack gaps. Henderson. Very versatile. Two fouls early. Good pass that time. Attacking the glass. That shows his versatility. He has great size. He can pass the ball exceptionally well. Makes an excellent interior pass. They're so talented. I'll tell you, Brent, they got so much talent. There's the little dish. Right off, draws people to him. And there's the conversion. I mean, they're going to be a very dangerous team in the NCAA tournament. I mean, and they should be UCLA. It's hard to believe when you look at them, and I think a lot had to do with the changeover, all the things that happened early. That this Man, club. Three, three. Oh. Wow, wow, wow. That was Brick City, USA. I think that slipped. He's better than that. I mean, it's hard to believe they got seven losses this ball. And it's also hard to believe that anybody can beat them by 48 points. Joe parks the play for the Devils. They got so many sets they go to left now. Well, they are still trying to shake Langdon free. He is uh, scoreless here in the first half. It has been the Ricky Price show. He's scored a dozen points. Langdon had 34 in their last game and put on a magnificent show against Clemson. Cloud short on the turnaround. Five rebounds for McCoy. Here's O'Bannon's open. He really runs well. One of the great assets he has is his athletic ability and to get into transition. Charles O'Bannon. See, Duke wants to dribble and get in the gap. The cloud with the Duke foul, Brent. Out of bounds. Unbelievable. There's a reminder. Big Monday. Syracuse, Providence, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Utah Rice on ESPN Monday night. That's a big game, by the way, for Oklahoma. Kansas going down there. That will not be easy. Kelvin Sampson does a great job. Newton back on the floor. They got a foul on McLeod in that situation. And McLeod sits down with three personals as Newton replaces him. And the Bruins leading by two, and they're at the free throw line. Charles comes from such a great family. Mom and dad did a great job. Really looking poor in that free throw line. That's going to come back to haunt him. Joe quickly to the attack. Now Langdon swings free, penetrates, tries to get it off, and he is wrapped up by Johnson. Good defensive play to force the jump ball situation. 
Ball goes back to Duke, and here's another example why the alternate possession is a joke. There's a great defensive play, and look who gets the ball, Duke. And they've turned it over. So the five-second violation against the Blue Devils puts the basketball back in the Bruins' hands. Could have used the 20-second there. I love the way this little guy plays because he tries to drive it, pinch it. See, I recovered. Tough for him against that size. Bailey misses on the shot. They're going to get better spacing right now, UCLA, offensively. They're allowing Duke to give a little help. See, you're too close to one another. And it hits it on the runner of Bannon again. He has really stepped up big time the latter part of the season. Really has played well. Started off poorly. Has really stepped his game up to become a marquee special that they love here Krzyzewski's in Westwood. Krzyzewski's furious with the officiating right now. He's all over Kennedy. He's stepped away from the 22nd to sell him right now that he thinks he's missed two in a row is the body language. And as a look at O'Bannon going to work, Sir Charles going to work. Take a look at that right here. You know, the referee and the whistles have turned completely around. UCLA has shot 17 free throws to Duke's four. The Bruins have hit 11 to Duke's two. That's a nine point difference. And the Bruins lead it by five. Part of that, however, is the way the Bruins have been aggressively attacking the basket. Look at the emotion to each other. They're talking to each other. Say, come on, we can win this. We got to win a big game. They're 0-7 in two years against national caliber teams out of the conference. They need a big win here just for psychological reasons to believe they're going Bailey's on Langdon who goes to the floor and turns it over. Three uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh, boy, down hard off the miss. Battle wrapped up Blue Devils. But the one thing about Langdon, he hasn't stopped playing hard on the other end of the Man floor. power advantage, price short. Back to Ricky. This is Capel. Capel's been quiet. They right? watch him go to work on Langdon. What a duel this is. Price comes around Bailey open off the glass. Newton offensive rebound. Sets Capel squares. There it is. Nice There's play. the trifecta for Capel. Yeah. But nice play by Newton to make that happen. The big guy gets the rebound. He has the presence, experience to pitch it back out, and Capel delivers. Now Bruins turn. And it's O'Bannon looks in on Capel. Puts it into Henderson's hand. Johnson wants the post. Missed shot, Newton rebound. There's the size again. What they might need in the second half. Inside of a minute now, and Capel right hand side, right in front of Lavin's bench. Opens Langdon. Missed again. But Wallace goes up in the air with Henderson. Jump ball is the call. And of course, this time, the arrow favors the Bruins. Langdon can't believe he was that wide open. I mean, coming off his career high of 34 when he was sensational. He was Superman against Clemson. Really having a tough time. Look, he's wide open. He can't believe it. He said, look, I gotta have, nobody's guarding me. There's no respect. They're not guarding me. I'm the Alaskan assassin. Hasn't been able to hit an iceberg here today so far. 33-31. I like that. I 40 like that. seconds to go. Good first half in terms of the effort, the energy, and the excitement that exists here. And the foul is against Price. That's his first. Ricky, Ricky first Jr., they got that great class coming in next year. It's going to be interesting to see how those players fit in. The Elton Brands, the Chris Burgesses, the Averys, and the Fattiers. Best class in the United States. Everybody rates them so high. So the final round of the Tucson Chrysler Classic is coming up next here on ABC. Phil Mickelson not in the chase as Brad Bryant now with a two-stroke advantage coming into the final round. Dollar, perfect at the free throw line, stays that way. Seven of seven and four steals for the Bruins, who lead it by three with 30 seconds to go. And Steve Lavin talking defense to Bailey. You have got to be impressed with Bailey as a defensive player. This is as good a job as I've seen done in a great shooter in a long time. Yeah, Bailey really has stepped it up defensively. Steve Lavin, as you said, 32 years old. His dad, Cap Lavin, is inducted in the Hall of Fame at the University of San Francisco. Bailey just sets down and squares up and waits for Langdon. Yeah, Bailey taking on the challenge here. You got to respect that. 
He's got a brother playing over at Penn State. Final seconds of first half. Shot clock is off. Duke going to play it for the last shot. Cable penetrates. Yes, it's the two. Three seconds for the Bruins. They've got to hurry. Final second of the game. No good. That was great offensive basketball by Duke. Showing their system. Getting the high percentage shot for Cable. This game is as good as advertised. The Bruins and Lavin lead Krzyzewski and Duke, but only by a point. 34-33. Let's go to John Saunders. All right, Brent, thanks a lot. It's time for the MCI Halftime Report. When we come back, we know Princeton is in the field of 64. We'll talk about that and some other things with Dick Vitale. Plus a look at scores and highlights, including a big one in the Big Ten. It's all coming up after this message and a word from our ABC stations. It's 34-33. It's a one-point game with Dick Vitale. I'm Brian Musburger. Dick, it shapes up as a very interesting uh, second half. One thing's for sure, Duke will attempt to shake loose Trajan Langdon. Yeah, they've got to get Langdon involved offensively. He's too talented as a player, and they've got to get him that three-point shot. But you're right. Toby Bailey was absolutely dynamite defensively in that first half. He did a great job defending the three and played Langdon so tough. Chased him all around, battled through and around and over screens. But one thing we cannot take away from Trajan Langdon is the fact that Payne Weber salutes him today as the scholar athlete of this game. And they congratulate Trajan on his investment in the future. Payne Weber recognizes that commitment to education with a $1,000 donation to Duke for ongoing research. Payne Weber, you can't lose with an investment in education. Now, the defense that Dick talked about, just keep an eye on Bailey who has had to hound number 21 all around the floor. Well, boy, you man defense, he's alert. He's gonna try to read the screen. See how he slides through a screen. And he's gonna find Langdon, comes through another screen. And now he's gonna play him head to head with the basketball. He locks up on him, gets a great defensive stance, gets good balance. See, so he doesn't allow Langdon to fool him with the fake. Now he closes up on him and he makes him give up the basketball. A great job defensively by Toby Bailey. Bailey, but this kid is too good. He will break out here with a spurt. Take it down, Mr. Musburger. He's too good offensively, Langdon. Well, there we see the first half statistics, and you can see field goal percentage 44 to 55 for the Bruins. So Duke needs to pick it up at the defensive end also. Now the Blue Devils will be moving left to right, as you can see. And Wojo out on top. Langdon is here. Bailey tries to get to him. Misses his first shot into McCoy's hand. I'll tell you one thing, he'll still keep shooting the basketball. It out of bounds, Bruin ball. The one thing that saved Duke in that first half was the spurt, the 13 zip spurt. As we look at the leaders here, Price had a big first half from out here at Carson, California. Long pass now to Cameron Dollar, who is outstanding defensively, also with four steals. Knocked away from Bailey, regains it. He's doubled. Quick pass now to O'Bannon, who is strong, but McCoy, very active, picked up the last two balls underneath. Here is Bailey again. Nice fake. fake. Rolls it in, traveled. Traveling is the call by Kennedy. Over to Duke it goes. Bill Kennedy called him for lifting his pivot foot. You know, a lot of people thought he was going to be a marquee special, the superstar in college basketball after his performance against Arkansas. I think what really hurt him, Brent, is they tried to move him to the point guard slot, and he was never comfortable in that position. So on the turnover, the ball goes back to the Bruins. This is Dollar out on top. Wojciechowski facing him. They get it to McCoy's hands, who comes way away from the basket, puts it down. Dollar fake Wojo penetrates. In and out. O'Bannon active underneath. Misses. Tap back and in. And that's Henderson who's going to get credit for that field goal. Four points for Henderson. This is McCoy's hands. Out of control right there. The Great pass to Henderson. Beautiful feed. We saw the versatility again, the transition ability of UCLA and their athletic ability. Henderson running the court. They're explosive. Bruins build a five in the early going. The Bruins are not giving him an easy look at the three. They are testing out beyond the arc. And that was their priority to really lock up on their three-point shooters. There's Henderson. The second personal on Langdon. 
I'll tell you, their bench is really into it as well. A lot of spirit on that sideline. Really exciting, and that's what winning does for you. You go on a little winning streak. They got a chance to three-peat with the Pac-10 three consecutive years. Here's McCoy. Good with the ball. Bannon, tap up, miss. Henderson back again. They may need Newton. I think they might be a little too small right now, Brent. Athletic and big and very aggressive around the basket, UCLA. Wojo goes down, runs it down in the corner. Great defense by Dollar, all over the ball. Capel. Domzowski's on their bench as well, a big guy who Mike's been really impressed with lately in practice. You may see him for a few minutes. But what makes UCLA so special with their big people, they're very athletic. Cable sits. Price rubs on a screen. O'Bannon paying attention. Langdon misfires again. Price throws it back and hits it. But I think Langdon is like 0 for 7 from three-point land in this game. Dollar on a drive for the Bruins. Misses. McLeod out quickly now to Wojo looking for numbers. He's got Price. He's got oh, yeah, Price. He overled him with the pass. Out of bounds. 17-30. Bruins with the ball and a five-point lead. Normally you don't see Wojciechowski turn that ball over. 3-1. to one. Assist to turnover ratio. There's Ricky Price missing it. He's had a great first half. Came out here in the second half and scored a big deuce. Eleven turnovers for Duke, nine for UCLA. McCoy with McLeod defending him. McCoy going to back him to the block and go ahead. That's a great one. I'll tell you, Brett, it's hard to believe he's not a superstar. It really is when you see that kind of ability inside. He is so quick for somebody his size. Quick and agile. He's got nice touch as well. it back to McLeod who fires the three. Bailey with a hand finally rebounded by Henderson who's been much more active this half. J.R. Henderson showing his rebounding ability. Some people feel he could even play on a perimeter. Bailey is fouled however. So he'll come to the free throw line. So we're going to watch Jelani go Coy on the inside. Now he's got the size advantage on McLeod. Beats him to the baseline with that good drop step. He's got a great upside to him. He's just learning how to play the game. Super South from out of San Diego. Basketball teams are so tough in their home environment. Here we go. It's absolutely the most important statistic in basketball, no matter what anybody says. Most teams have two personalities. It's amazing to watch how they can turn around. And here in the Poly Pavilion, the Bruins have been very, very tough today. Yanked away now by Duke, trailing 43-35. To give you an idea of how tough the Bruins have been defensively, Duke is only 4 of 16 from three-point range. That's 25%. Even a dummy like me could figure that out. Rice nails a three. He's had a wonderful game. 17 points for Ricky. I tell you, what a coming home party he's having. He's really keeping Duke in the game, making all big shots. Ricky Price gets a start today because he's at home. He's really like a starter, though. They really start like six people. Henderson doubled up with the pressure. Dollar gets it to Bailey. Henderson's going to glide in. See, by the way, out says, "Give me a break, big fella. Where did that one come from?" J.R. Henderson, a little showtime here in Tinseltown. I said they got like six starters. They'd like to play six together right now against the five for UCLA. You got that right. UCLA really playing well. Good fake by McLeod. But McCoy went back on him, but he got the bounce anyway. Rashad McLeod can take big people away from the basket. Duke figures they're going to create problems for other people trying to match up with our quickness and our ability. Good, good steal by McLeod. Offense, defense had an open man. Oh, double dribble. Like and he turns it over. Yeah, double dribble. On the ball. We got a good one, Brett. We got a great one. Mike Krzyzewski is being carried by Price. That's 17 of their points here. We'll be right back. 
Payne Weber College Basketball on ABC. Brought to you by Boost, the perfect snack for imperfect people. The U.S. Army, be a part of the toughest, smartest Army in the world. Be all you can be. State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And Neutrogena T-Gel Shampoo, it works. 15 and a half minutes to go. Bruins lead it by five. Nick. We're going to see the versatility. Look at him sliding and gliding. Nobody stepped in to take the charge. He was Looked up like in the air. George McGinnis. Yeah, I like One that. Hand. George McGinnis. Only at home, baby. Only at home I can do that. From East Bakersfield, California. Is he playing on a perimeter? A lot of size. He's in slide to the high post. Look at Duke. Duke Shotkin coming out with a little zone. Duke coming out with a little zone. Two, three zone. Adjustment by Mike Krzyzewski. He's trying to match up. Smaller. He's decided that maybe the zone will help him against McCoy and Henderson down on that block if he can't get some assistance in there. And UCLA takes his time trying to solve it here, too. Oh, what a great look. Dude, with the look from Henderson. Great look. Tremendous vision by Cameron Dollar. And Henderson gets the score. Duke didn't look comfortable in the zone. No, they didn't look comfortable at all. Well, they don't get much experience with it. Exactly. They're a man of man team. Double it up. Langdon wanted McLeod, and McCoy fouled him. We're getting to a danger point right now for Duke. The next four minutes, I really believe, are going to be dangerous for Duke. They have to go on a little spurt here to quiet down the momentum that is now on that UCLA side. Mike Krzyzewski has done an amazing job getting this club in a tough ACC already with 11 wins. Everybody beats each other in that league. Now Langdon, O'Bannon has him this time. Give it up. McLeod wants him back. Inside, outside, over the top. Misses again. He's 0 for 8. You can't believe it. Cloud comes back, though, and puts in the deuce. Good offensive rebound by Rashad. We're looking at Trajan Langdon, one of the great shooters in college basketball, 0 for 8. From just three point line. Three point he's ball. also missed one, two on the day. He has. Oh. Dollar gets free inside. McCoy knocked away, but fouled by Langdon. They tried to post up inside against Wojciechowski. Sometimes when you try those kind of maneuvers, you get away from your normal set. Try to take advantage of the little guy. He may be a little size, but he's got a heart of a giant. Newton will try it. Langdon sits with three personals and a nightmare of a trip into the Poly Pavilion here. I think good move. Take him out for a minute or two. UCLA had some good recruits coming in as well. They're really excited as a free throw. Well, I'll tell you what. He struck McCoy hard. misses. There is no question about it. Yeah, he really misses big. They got a commitment from Earl Watson from Kansas and Billy Knight from out of L.A. And Rico Hines who played at St. John's Prospect Hall. One for five. I'll tell you what, in a close game, Dick, you got to put McCoy on the free throw line if you're playing the Bruins. That's, that's a weak point right there. You think Shaq's rubbed off a little over there? Shaquille looked down Shaq in L.A. Shaq closer than what I've been looking at. <laughs> comes over and uh, he is fouled. This is a dick I'll tell you this is a very big moment. Johnny hey, Dawkins Johnny one Dawkins. of the original greats oh, under Krzyzewski. That wonderful team in the mid 80s. He's one of the radio analysts. Player of the year. Chris Johnson. The game. I'm going to watch out. He might want my job. Johnny Dawkins. I'm going to watch out. Johnny D. What a great player he was. 1986, they lost that national title to Never Nervous, Purvis Ellis, Tommy Yamaka. I've said it 5,000 times. I will not say it again. He's going to make a great college coach. Agreed. And Newton with the high rainbow free throw. You know, Dick, I was going to say, this is a very important time for Mr. Newton in this game. He comes in down for 14 minutes. They really could use little size. This is this time. Yeah, they could use the size inside and his experience as well. I tell you, if he could step up his game and play the kind of basketball he's capable of, how they really become an unbelievable basketball team. Well, he is defending the boy the rest of the way. He's going to help out this afternoon big time. Boy only shooting 42% on the free throw line. And Newton muscling in, throws an elbow at O'Bannon and says, get out of here. Well, they're trying to get him to show some toughness. They want to see some real emotion out of him. Okay, well, nice pass. Newton goes up and makes the field goal. He's contributed at both ends. Runs the floor now. I say 5-5 is the big man for Duke down a stretch here. Well, remember the North Carolina game? He came off the bench, was benched after 
a Georgia Tech game, and he played really, I thought, well in spurts there. Gave him some positive minutes. Johnson back in. Here's McCoy. Newton comes out and attacks McCoy. Too quick off the dribble. They just took Newton to school, but it's coming the other way on the charge underneath. Well, he left with his the call. feet. As soon as you leave your feet, you're susceptible for the charge. There's Newton right now trying to show. Oh, don't need the elbow out there. Charles stepped away. But now look at him get stripped here. Oh, he's, I can't believe this guy's that quick. Look at this here. A little matter to a defense right there by Mr. Newton. But that's the third time that Duke has stepped in and taken a charge in this game. And they'll take the ball at 47. 45. They do that as well as any school in the country. They rotate over, give help to one another, and that's what a team defense is about. Building help for one another. Cable's got to get going too. They need some help out of Cable. Price rattled out. Rebound Johnson, who's played well off the blue and bench. He's got a lot of pain in that ankle, he told me. He said it really bothers me. He loves to post inside Chris Johnson. Working against the freshman Carroll. to go now. He made some big threes against Southern Cal when they blew out the Trojans on Wednesday. Price could not answer. Into a man. He's got an open man. It's Henderson left side. Capel's back, however. And uh, he may have injured himself. Reaching down toward her. Now I'm not so sure that a shoelace didn't just come untied. Anyway, he's going to lace it back up. I don't think he was hurt. And we've got uh, WBC lightweight action coming your way next Saturday and Sugar Ray Leonard's going to talk about his comeback Mindy against Johnston that's at 4 30 Eastern time hey mention the fights you got to help me out you know a lot of people I need four tickets for Tyson and Holofield help me out come on Brent help me out I'll pay I'll pay how much will you pay? I'll pay fifteen hundred a pop for ringside tickets come Done. on help me out if my friends at the MGM will just call Dick <laughs> I've never seen a championship fight like that. Well, that's All right, here we go. Be a great fight. Dollar now rotates. Lloyd cut off off the pass. They've turned it over. Now the Bruins are up five. 12 10 to go. We got a heavyweight battle going on right now in college basketball. When you talk about tradition, John Wooden winning those 10 national titles. It's absolutely unheard of when you think about that. Duke going back to back in 91 Newton, and 92. A hard screen on Dollar. April foul comes to the free throw line, but the man who set that play was Newton coming out here with an aggressive screen out on top of the arc. Man, Newton tried to give a little screen and roll action. They really just want him to play with some energy and a great effort. They want him to exert effort. There's the screen by Newton, allows the penetration by Capel, who goes to the line. This ball chasing to the right now. Capel's brother is a junior in high school. Everybody says one of the top ten in America. Must hit the free throws on the road when trailing. First law. Well, that's a commandment. That's thou shall make those free throws. One of the commandments of playing basketball, winning basketball. Missed them both. Wow. Picked up, however. Fresh opportunity. Get a break. Langdon's three. This. Oh! The final Langdon goes breaks down. the schneid. The Alaskan assassin tickles the twine. One of nine. 11 45. And that is huge. Pulls Duke to within two. Came at the right time. Johnson goes around. Newton gets past him. I'll tell you, a little mini version of his father, Marcus Johnson. A little one on one. Lined it again. Oh, no, he he he's coming. Here he comes. I said he's going to heat it up, Brett. He's too good a shooter. He's pure when he squares that body. Back to O'Bannon. Nothing like the point Bruin leads suddenly. Nothing like that trifecta to get you back. Loose. Fresh for the Bruins. Bringing Newton away out here playing Johnson. Yeah, and then what they put down on the dribble, and now uh, Johnson will go back down low with Newton. O'Bannon up over the top. A two big shoots right over the top of Wojciechowski. Too much size right there. Charles O'Bannon certainly is playing outstanding basketball. Had eight out of the last 11 points in the first half for UCLA. Langdon off a fake on Bailey. Glides, glass. But bringing him to the line. Fouled by Johnson. He'll shoot a pair. 
He's automatic on a free throw line. He's the best free throw shooter in the ACC. Take a look at Wojciechowski. Look at him like a leader. Look at him like a commander. He says, come on, come on, get a screen for him. He said, he's the hot guy. That is just smart basketball. He knows he's feeling it right now. Wojciechowski made that happen. He's a coach on the floor. Great play by Wojciechowski. Those are the little things people don't remember. Brent, the winners do. He immediately sets that play up for his teammate. This kid is automatic on the line. He made four big clutch free throws at the end of the game against Wake Forest on the road when they went to their 1-4 setup. So he gets the touch. Shooters get the touch. A one-point game as Langdon with a quick eight. 54-53, the Bruins leads at one. 10-39 with Quinn Snyder watching from the Duke bench. Timeout. Always active, the brain trust of the Los Angeles Lakers, Jerry West and Mitch Kupchak. They just tipped it off here about a minute ago, and once a coach, I guess always a coach. Get a T.O. baby, I'll tell you one thing right now. You talk about Jerry West, as I was telling you off the air, one of the hardest working guys, look at him right here, one of the hardest working guys you can see. He's a Hall of Famer, and yet he's out in every arena, and he's breaking in Mitch Kupchak just perfectly. What a great combination, two class guys as well. The Bruins lead it by one, 54-53. Ten imagine? and a half minutes to go in regulation. Can you imagine Jerry West with the three-point line, what he would have done? Wow. Or Oscar. Rick <laughs> Haley looking in now on a bounce pass. Johnson again goes with the underhand finger roll. He's so effective down in the post inside. You got to beat him to the spot. He really locks up exceptionally well inside. Duke one three-point shot away from a tie, but Cable will penetrate. They're going underneath and back outside. There it comes, missing though again. McLeod, here's Price. McLeod does a nice job getting the second opportunity. Cable run, nice setup. Carroll, good defense underneath. Referees allowing a little contact on the interior. There's a curl move by Bailey. He drifted nice. on that. Out of bounds. So again, it's 56-53. UCLA over Duke now. Nine and a half minutes to go. And a reminder next Saturday, Temple UMass, the key one. We'll also be covering Cincinnati, Memphis, Oregon, UCLA here on ABC. Well, UCLA's got the two Oregons coming here, and they got to go to a road to Washington and Washington State. Bob Bender doing a great job. Big win over Stanford last night for Washington. Johnson rebounded the miss by Price. What a plus Johnson's been off the bench. Bailey tried to pick it up, and the foul is going to go against Duke. And that's Langdon. That's his fourth personal foul for Trajan Langdon. Langdon is fourth personal foul. Well, bring bring him back to the point. Langdon will go out for the stretch drive. Had a tough afternoon, but had that one eight-point spurt. Gave his team a big lift. Mike loves him. Mike, you no, know, he's a baseball player. Third baseman into the San Diego uh, Padres chain. I told him, forget about that with Cameron Eddie there. Go play shortstop. Down toward nine minutes. Woods lead it by three. Johnson with the spinner. I'll tell you, he's a great one on one move. Well, that looked like his dad. I'll tell you, just looked like dad. He said, just like my papa, baby, when he did it at 75. 12 points for Johnson today. And a five-point oh. lead right now. And tough defense against Capel. And Carroll wide open. Joe is going to fire the three. And he makes it. What a big three. What a big three. Big possession. Whoa, Joe. Whoa, Rambo delivers it. Alonzo Bannon. Put it up to the corner. Bailey. Boy, who return. Comes over to the baseline. And Bailey. They got a little bit too close together. And the Devils. With a chance to tie or go ahead. Carowell is fouled. I think he's very strong. Johnson got him. Very confident player for a diaper dandy, Carowell. Let's look at Trajan Langdon on the sideline. Four personal fouls for Anchorage, Alaska. Now take a look right here. Just like his dad, Marcus Johnson, he's going to spin on that baseline, drop step, take it up strong, kiss it on a glass. And then Wojciechowski comes back the other way. And Wojo says, we need a big three. There it is. Carowell shooting two. 
Now Carowell shooting for the tie. The last time we were tied in the Poly Pavilion was at 26 back in the first half. And we're one free throw away from that right now here. 8-16 mark in what shaped up to be an outstanding matchup between Duke of the ACC against UCLA and the Pac-10. And it has turned out to be exactly that. This for the tie, and there we are. Deadlocked at 58. 8-16 to go now. Mike Krzyzewski said he likes this kind of a battle. Get away from the rigors of the ACC. Get out and play somebody tough, and it gives you a little bit of feeling for the NCAA. Boy, he just backs his man in. Good foul, though. He Shot. can't. Oh, no, he foul. no foul. He traveled backing in. Yeah, he walked before the foul. Shuffled his feet. Ball going inside. Now watch him right here. You can see him going. Oh, yeah, he lifted his pivot foot. He lifted his pivot foot. Devils seeking the shot that would put them ahead here inside of eight minutes. Price is a guy that wants to make the play happen. Price or Capo, the two experienced players, have really stepped it up in the Duke run. They're going to win 11 out of 12. Their only loss was to Maryland, who they'll play on Thursday night. Capo sealed. It'll be McLeod short. Good defense by the Bruins. It's been the story all game long. In foul. Good call. McLeod took the charge. Don't really need McCoy handling the ball in that situation, Brent. He's got to give it up and go inside and utilize his speed and his quickness and his agility. He's very talented on the interior. There he is against McLeod. McLeod beats him to the spot. Questionable. 7:21 and timeout. Seven twenty-one to go, and coaching is about to matter big time. Young Steve Lavin, matched against a legend already, and Mike Krzyzewski with the greatest of them all, John Wooden, watching from behind the Bruin bench. This is where coaching really begins to matter. When you've got two quality teams tied with seven twenty-one to go now, you've got foul trouble on both sides, and they put the ball in Capel's hands. The Blue Devils do coming down with the trip that could put them ahead. I'll tell you one thing, Lavin responded big time in two close games against a super coach. Hey, Paul. In and out. Rebound, Bruins. Bailey tries to run the floor, gets free. Beautiful left hand, won't go. Carowell for Duke. Caper got it to Price without walking. Penetrate runner. Underneath, back come the Devils. Ahead, Carowell stayed with it. Good offensive rebound by Carowell, working on the inside. UCLA won those two close games over Arizona, and they swept Arizona for the first time in many, many a year. So Steve Lavin, though young, has been in tough situations. In another one now. He calls up Coach Wooden, speaks to him regularly. Nice diagonal Great diagonal pass. Henderson with the catch. The look by Johnson. UCLA is going to be something to reckon with in the NCAA tournament. Because they're playing one tenacious team here today. Cloud. Comes to the glass. Missed it. Henderson and gets it. Bailey head up all the time, looking for the open man. But it's not. He's no bad in, and the foul is going to be against Duke. Great look to Cameron Dollar, who kicked it off to O'Bannon, who tried to convert it. Capel with the foul. See, I think, Brent, this game's going to get to execution at the end, and that means making free throws. If you can't make free throws, you don't go into the winner's locker room. with Bailey on that side. For three years under Gene Cady, really keeps in contact with Pete Newell, who's certainly a legend in coaching. His dad played for Pete Newell. He reaches out to the right people. He surrounds himself with good, good people. And certainly Jimmy Harris gave him a great opportunity. Not to mention some great players, which is still the most important. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, you, you need players, don't you, huh? Wow. You mean Coach Woody had some players? They have some players here? I think so. Oh, Bannon mean, at that line. Not bad with a Kareem in the middle and a Walton in the middle. I mean, not bad at all. Free throw line. But it takes putting them together, and that's what Coach Wooden did, and that's certainly what Mike Krzyzewski did to win the national titles. Get the lead. Them. Play as a unit. 61-60 now, five and a half minutes. Can't have defensive breakdowns now. You gotta find your man, you gotta communicate defensively. Smaller Duke team puts it in Langdon's hands, and he's done it, he has put the Blue Devils ahead. Amazing story. I mean, he was shooting nothing but blanks, and then all of a sudden here in the second half, he finds himself with three big trifectors. He's three of 12, but all three were huge. He's not a 25% shooter. I guarantee you that. Now let's see how the Bruins respond. Anderson. Penetrate stays one-on-one -on -one with Dollar. Missing. Jackson tried to get the handle. See, that's too a little bit unselfish. J.R. Henderson should have scored right there. Dollar was looking for contact, but he was so close to the basket at 6'9". See, now watch him right here. He's got a one-on-one. -on -one. Now he's going to strip him. Now right here. Take it right to the basket and score. There's the little dish. See, he expects contact. No contact. McCoy checks back in with four personal fouls. The Blue Devils are on a 10-3 run under Krzyzewski here. Inside of five minutes. Now let's see what the Bruins have in mind as you can take a look at the foul situation. McCoy with four. On the other side, of course, Langdon with four. So two key men. One foul away from being disqualified with Chris Johnson returning for the Bruins. Well, right now in this possession here, Duke looks like they're going to zone on the inbounds and get a basketball. But if Johnson's being played by Langdon, I would go right at Langdon. They're going to zone. They're going to zone right here. The last time we saw the zone, it did not look good. They're zoning. See, there's the zone. Johnson's attack on the outside as he steps inside. That shot. That shot right Price there. Price yanks it away. Shots and the Devils come back down. So their patience, their coaching, and their pride. Wojo open, takes it, misses. Just short on the shot. Johnson rebounds. Gave the Bruins now an opportunity to tie or take a lead. We're down to the 424 mark. Bailey penetrates. Johnson off the fake from the line. Short, flat on the shot. Loose on the floor. O'Bannon comes up firing. Johnson had it, and the foul is going to go against Duke. Wojciechowski with the foul. If the game gets in the transition at the end, I give the edge to UCLA. If it's five on five and a half court game for execution, I'll give the edge to Duke. Controlling tempo now and making the play that you want to be made is really going to be important right here. Now with a pair. Shooting for the tie. Big game for you, Johnson. I'll tell you, Brad, they run away from the tie now. They lose to Louisville, they lose to Illinois, they lose to Kansas. And every big game out of conference, they've come up empty, and that's why this game is a must for them. Krzyzewski has not lost all the big games this year. Now for the tie at 4 12. Well, Duke looking to be a number one seed as a great opportunity. Got a deadlock. So it's the youngster. The young gun of the Bruins matching Wits now with one of the coaching legends of all time in the NCAA's Mike Krzyzewski. Tied at 63 and four minutes to go. And the crowd is alive. I'll tell you one thing. They're not leaving early today here at Pauley Pavilion. Price tried to come free, but Johnson went with him. Trying to get some screens now for Langdon. They're going to try to pump a screen for Langdon. And timeout has been called. Krzyzewski wants to talk about the set with 11 seconds to go. 20 seconds, Weber College Basketball on ABC and Raycom Sports. Brought to you by Payne Weber. When you invest with Payne Weber, you invest with more intelligence. The U.S. Army. Be a part of the toughest, smartest Army in the world. Be all you can be. BASF. We don't make a lot of the products you buy. We make a lot of the products you buy better. And MCI. Is this a great time or what? 
and the record crowd has watched a dandy. UCLA led it by 10 early in the first half. Now we're deadlocked at 63 with 3.47 to go. Now after the timeout, remember, Dick, that Duke only 11 seconds to get this shot off. I'll tell you what could be key down the stretch here in less than four minutes. The free throw shooting of Langdon. Duke has a set that they want, a 1-4 set, where they put the ball in his hands, and they almost make you foul him if they get the lead. Cable penetrates. He's fouled. Cable comes to the free throw line. What they like to do late in the game, Brent, if they get the lead, is put the ball in Langdon's hands, who's a 90% free throw shooter, and spread the court. So that's next, the final round of the Tucson Chrysler Classic here on ABC. 343 to go here in the Poly Pavilion. Deadlocked at 63 and Capel now to break the tie. Last time they went to the line, they just pulled free throws. Capel did. Three in a row, he's missed. Got to make things. His dad will be recruiting his brother, Jason. I think he's got an advantage. He knows the mother really well. I think he's got a great shot to get Jason. But right now, he'd rather see his son go to this line and make this free throw. So would he like to see him. So would Amica and Mr. Quinn Snyder. Assistant coaches. Now for the Blue Devils, Chris Carrowell, the freshman, checks in and Capel will sit back down. A little more size now on the defensive end as Mike goes to that bench now because of matchups that he wants. That's a good point you made about size. Get a little more strength, a little bit more size on the floor with Carrowell. Try to neutralize the size that UCLA has. The Bruins pound it down in low. And Henderson, but it goes over. And the fans can't believe this one. Henderson down inside trying to post and get a score. Here's Mike Krzyzewski playing offense, defense, as he rotates, rotates Capel now back on the floor. Now here we're going to take a look at Henderson. Now they're going to call him for the left hand, a little push offensively. The left hand, the left hand was there. The left There's hand. No question, he was using the left hand on the body as he came in, and as Dick, Dick pointed out, they have hit the, uh, they've hit the bench now. They've gone back here at the offensive end with Capel. Smaller, quicker team on the outside. Price pulls up. Ah. Miss. Now it's Dollar off of the miss. Down one, remember, the Bruins can get the lead. Dollar goes hard. Gets inside, and there's a whistle before the shot. Dollar really runs that ball up the court quickly, but sometimes looks a little bit out of control. In the last possession, Duke tried to get a one-on-one -on -one maneuver for Ricky Price. How big free throw shooting is. We've said it so many times, partner. So many games are won and lost right at this charity strike. He's getting educated into the world of college coaching, Steve Levin. But you know what's great now? He's not into him anymore, as he said. He's got that four year deal. He's got over a million six. He's in love. His girl, Trina Camacho, stands up and cheers for him on the sideline. That's eight of nine from the free throw line. And the Bruins and the Blue Devils are tied at 64 now with 310 to go. This for the lead. Just what we thought a real nail biter, a mail lock special. Converting free throws. Good job by Dollar. Now it is Duke's turn. Nine for ten as the crowd gets up to give a little lift. Defensively, try to get them to play on the defensive end. This crowd has been great here today. Capel hits Langdon, couldn't get the handle. Bailey tries to jump him, penetrates open. Capel with the look. Got it. What a great look by Langdon. Rather than force a shot, he penetrates and he pitches. And Capel shows his experience and delivers. Up two now, Bruin ball, two and a half minutes. We're winding down toward. It'll be Bailey. Off to the left. But Johnson, offensive rebound, puts it to the tie. Short, oh. put in. Henderson's hand. We're tied. And 67 on JR. Henderson's field goal, 223. That's what JR is going to do a little bit more. He's going to be a little bit more aggressive and utilize his talent on the inside. Oh, baby, is this place alive? This place is rocking. the drive down the lane coming up big again I'll tell you one thing this kid earlier this year the crowd was pulling him he was on a bench and here he is making all the big plays Jeff Capel there he is with the jumper 
His teammates love it. They signal the three. And now watch JR work on the inside on a missed shot by Mr. Johnson. What a great game, Brad. What a great game. Well, what a great coaching job being done by Mike Krzyzewski. Called a 22nd timeout, up two right now at the two minute mark to make sure that he has the right players on the floor defensively. He is just pulling all the strings over there. Remember, his best score has had perhaps his worst game of the year. And here he is up 69 67 now, and he gets more size on the floor. And he's up on the road as well, playing against a team that's really playing well right now, who came out and given Duke their best. Hit. Those jerseys. And there's some uh, moisture on the floor. They're going to mop it up in front of the UCLA bench. That's why we had the play stopped, and the ball will be taken out of bounds here. Mid court line there. Look at Tony Spina. Look at Tony Spina. The trainer. Look at him working the floor. A little Paisan. Hey, I'll buy you some ravioli after a play like that, Tony. 155 remaining in regulation. Here's your job, Deuce. Wojciechowski can't get beat on a perimeter because that opens up little plays on the inside. You must shut their drive down. So you can't allow UCLA to get that penetration. Bailey gets inside Langdon. Got on his hip. Left hand for the tie. Super one-on-one -on -one play by Bailey. Nobody rotated over to Duke defensively. 27 in regulation. This baby could be headed to OT. We don't want to foul this guy. He's automatic on the line. Price on it. Misses. Johnson rebounds. 115. Good defensive job by UCLA. Blocking out. Getting the, coming up with the rebound. They're going to spread the court. Execution so important here. Bailey wants a baseline again. Oh, Jump pass over to Henderson. Missed the shot. Got it back. Great second effort right there by Henderson. Duke trying to get some motion offensively. Here we go, 45 on the clock. They want to time out. out over on the Duke bench. They want to set a play. 23 seconds. Wow! Wow! Oh! This is fantastic, baby. Temple takes on UMass. Cincinnati meets the Memphis Tigers. Or out west, Oregon battles UCLA. It's Payne Weber College Basketball Saturday on ABC Sports. The story of the second half has been J.R. Henderson. 16 of his 18 points, including the field goal that put the Bruins ahead here. He is 9 of 12 from the field with seven rebounds after sitting out nine minutes in the first half because of fouls and you can see what J.R. Henderson means to coach Steve Lavin and the Bruins here and look at him agonize over the putback on the sideline. Meanwhile at the other end here they come now 23 seconds on the shot clock 43 for the game Duke is down two. Oh to deflect the ball. Pass. Bad inbounds by Price. They go for the ball and Capel commits the personal. Wow. One of the mistakes, Ricky, only mistake Ricky has made. The inbounds into the basketball, the deflection. Some people don't play the basketball. UCLA came up and played the ball. And he deflection, but this baby's still not over. You gotta convert free throws. We're gonna watch, look at O'Bannon working right here. Very active and creates the deflection with his hands up. Now O'Bannon shooting one and one. Here's the front end, and it's huge. Short! Missed it. Duke's ball. 71-69. 38 seconds. Lead Price. Price stopped by O'Bannon from penetrating now. Where is Langdon? Bailey's with him on the left. Capel waits for Rojo. Spread in the court. Langdon, and Bailey chases him now. Up on top, left side, Rojo. They put it over in his hands. Fire partially. Got a hand on it, baby. Battle underneath. Wasn't he pushed out on that end? Wow, it looked that way. Didn't it dick to you? It looked like he was pushed out. 20-second timeout. 20 timeout, UCLA. There's only 17 seconds on the game clock. Watch this, folks. There's a look at the offensive rebound by Capel. I don't know. And look at the coach. 
saying he pushed, he pushed. Does it go down as Cable working on the offensive board? I don't know, tough to see from our angle, Brent. Really tough to yeah, see. Because it was very hard to see foot baseline relationship as he went down deck with the uh, with the contact. But regardless now, UCLA using a 20, they've got only 17 seconds. So now Coach O'Toole certainly wanted it, one of the assistants. Now they have McCoy off the floor because of his poor free throw shooting because Duke must foul. They wrap Bailey up, so it's going to be Bailey coming up. And the game clock still shows 17 seconds. Bailey, incidentally, is one of two at the free throw line. Clock doesn't start until the ball is touched on the floor, but right now, Duke's got to hope at least if he makes one, misses the second, to at least have a shot with the three point shot. If I'm then UCLA in that situation, I don't give him a chance to shoot the three. Especially with them being an outstanding three point shooting team. A lot of situations change here based on what he does on this line. He makes both. It's really almost lights up. He's so missed it. Oh, he missed it. And McLeod and O'Bannon, the possession arrow favors the Bruins. Alternate possession. I just Bruins hate this. get it on the alternate possession. I hate this rule. Now you should be throwing the ball up and let him scrap for position. Don't let it be dictated by some rule. Come on, rules committee. Get rid of this rule. It's no good for the game. It penalizes good defense. What a great finish we're having here today. Wow. And of course, we'll be going right to that at the conclusion of our basketball game. Final round of the Tucson Chrysler Classic. Here we have 16 seconds. And the Bruins with the ball, so Duke will be forced to foul again. Ducelet giving them an opportunity on that free throw line. They could have closed this baby up. Got to be able to finalize. That's a part of the game. Special situations. A drive of Coach Bananas. Duke will look for the foul now right away. They want again Bailey. Capel reaching around from behind. So a couple of seconds have gone to 15 now. And Bailey comes back to the line where he is one of three. And again, we get down to mathematics right now. If he makes one and misses the second, a three point shot can make it an OT. -er. If he makes both, Duke's going to have to magic, find a magic to come up with a four point play. There's a look at the Duke bench, the concern on that Now remember side. one thing about this, that's the tenth foul. Two shots. So this is two shots for Bailey. This is not one and one. So that changes the dynamics completely here for UCLA. A little bit more of a margin of error sitting on a 71-69 lead. They're up by two. Make them both and it's going to be really tough for Duke. He's taking Ricky Price out of the game. I think he's got some blood that's exposed. That could be a big loss going to the sideline. They're going to work on it. So you would like to have Ricky Price on that floor, especially offensively. Steve Lavin holding his own here today as the Bruins come down the stretch and Price receiving that medical attention on the sideline. And the officials say, come on, Ricky, we got to go. Bob Garibaldi runs over, throws him a fastball at 95 miles an hour like he did when he was with the Giants. Gets him on the floor. But makes Bailey think a little bit more about it. Helps to freeze the shooter. Al McGuire used to always say, freeze that shooter. One for three. That's a big one. And here comes even a bigger one. 69 and a three. And now for the four-point lead. Here it is, Brent. This could be the game. Certainly play a big part in putting the nail down in that coffin if he converts it before. But Duke's got to come up and score quick. Need to hit quick and then foul again. Yeah, and hit quick. Can't waste time. Got to go like goals the now. And goal. Great block, McLeod back with a three and misses. Loose underneath, UCLA has done it. Yes, sir, they win their first game in two years against a non-conference team. It doesn't make any difference. It's, it's a four-point lead with two seconds. Over. This game is history. The bus driver's lighting up the bus, but the Dukies will be back. You can mark on it. Thursday night, they'll be back against Maryland. Boy, I thought for sure we had goaltending down here on this penetrating effort from behind. But Obama was able to beautifully get up. 
and make a clean swipe on the ball. When you watched it the first time, you thought for sure it was goaltending, but taking another look at it, he was so athletic and coming from behind. Look at Levin doing a dance. He's doing a victory dance, and he deserves it here today. It was a wonderful <laughs> job by the UCLA Bruins. 73-69, and the celebration begins wow, at the Pauley Pavilion. They're knocking tables down. They're flying on the court. Let me say this. That's the respect for Duke. That celebration is a respect for the Duke jersey. Yes, but the moment belongs to UC. 73-69. The Bruins with their biggest win of the year in non-conference wow. competition. Awesome, Coming up baby. next, the Tucson Chrysler Classic for Nick Vitale. I'm Brett Musburger. So long, everybody. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television.